Um, thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Jenny Bickley. I'm the Education Abroad Specialist um, for the Sustainability in Cyprus program. Uh, I work between the colleges and departments and the faculty and our office to help facilitate the Education Abroad program. Um, I am here today to give you information about the program in Cyprus. Um, we also have faculty here to, to talk about uh, the faculty that will travel with you. Um, and we also have a return student. So I will go ahead and let everybody introduce themselves and then we can get started. So. Diane? Hi, I'm Diane morrison Beatty. I'm the Chief Global Strategy Officer for the College of Nursing on the main campus of The Ohio State University. Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Stavros Constantino. I am a geography professor and uh, I'm a native of Cyprus. And I had uh, two groups of students to Cyprus in 2018 and 2019. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll do it again in 2022. And Anthony, and, do you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Sure. Uh, hi, hi everyone. My name is Anthony Katsionis. I'm a recent graduate of Ohio State, and I'm a current graduate student at the Fisher College of Business. Um, I was thankful to be able to go to Cyprus in uh, May of 2019. And looking forward to sharing my uh, experience with you. All right, so if um, I know that, Diane, you're short on time, so I, I will turn it over to you here to uh, kind of start things off okay. for us. Okay, I do have to step out to give another talk, but I wanted to tell everyone who's on or who's listening to this later after we present, about the great opportunity that we developed for uh, education abroad, global learning in Cyprus. So Dr. Constantino and I have put our heads together and tried to make this what I believe, and I'm biased, but I'm gonna say it, is the absolutely best study abroad program that's available for students. Because we combined opportunities from two campuses, so main campus and Mansfield, a faculty from each, Dr. Constantino, a Cyprus native, he is a wealth of information, of connections, of knowing the best places to go, the best, best places to eat, the best things to do. He's a joy to travel with, and he will be running again his geography course. And we paired this now with a new health and wellness sustainable development goals course that is up under review to meet the gen ed thematic um, health and wellness for credit requirement. So we have combined two classes. You can take either or, or both. We set it up so that you could take seven credits in the time while we're in Cyprus, still enjoy all of the activities and wonders of the Mediterranean and the great opportunity. I'm sure Anthony's gonna tell you what a great place it is to be but you will get your seven credits done or you can take just one or both courses. And um, we will do some combined learning and cultural interaction activities. So you will have both of us there. I'm planning that we are going this year. We filled the course last year, unfortunately couldn't go, but things look very positive. Uh, so I just wanted to tell you, we really were very smart about designing this education abroad to meet your learning needs, to meet your global travel and learning opportunities um, so that you could really enjoy yourself, get a lot done, but at the same time, build off what happens in both the courses. So they really, um, as I would say, they're the best bang for your buck. So you will hear a lot about Cyprus. And the only thing I will say is if you don't have a passport, you better be applying for it now because it is quite a long wait and we will be going in May. And I will be the faculty traveling with the students uh, by air and meeting Dr. Constantino who sets up the course and gets everything ready for us. So we just zip in and have a really good time and learn a lot. So that's it for now. Great, thank you. So 
we will uh, go ahead with the uh, OIA portion of the presentation to kind of give you some of the more administrative side of things. Um, if you do have any questions, I ask that you put them in the Q&A um, and then we'll do our best. If we haven't answered them throughout the session, we'll do our best to then answer them either as we go or um, at, at the end of the session. So um, this program, let me just advance it here. Um, so the program this year will be uh, group travel. So you will be traveling with uh, Dr. Morrison Beatty to Cyprus. Um, you'll depart together on Friday, May 5th um, to Cyprus, and then you'll return back to Columbus on Friday, June 4th. So included in the program fee will be your flight. So you do not need to worry about um, booking any international travel for this program. While you're there, you'll be seeing a variety of locations um, and we'll talk about those in a little in, a, in more depth in, in a bit. Um, so you can um, take, um, as was mentioned, this is a collaboration between the College of Nursing and the Department of Geography. Um, so students can take up to seven hours of credit. So you can either take Nursing 2798 um, for four credit hours, or you can take Geography 3753.02 for three credit hours, or you can take them both. So you have the opportunity to earn up to seven credit hours of, um, of graded OSU credit while you're abroad. So once you're admitted Jen, to, yeah, go ahead. I'm just gonna interject here. So students, I want to make sure they understand, you do not have to be a nursing student to take the nursing course. It is Gen Ed health and wellness focused course. And it's health and wellness of young and emerging adults. So probably everybody attending in Cyprus. Yeah, thank you. So yeah, there is no assumed knowledge for either of the courses. So students that have no experience in either nursing or geography can take this, uh, can participate in this program. Um, you will be learning through a variety of different um, opportunities. So both lecture and field experiences. Um, no matter which of the courses you take, you will participate in the same field trips. So um, you will get the same sort of cultural and um, sort of extracurricular field experiences, um, no matter if you take the nursing or the geography or both. Um, so as far as the courses go, um, you once you're admitted into the program, so we will be um, having a deadline in January and then we'll admit students. Once you're admitted into the program, you will uh, let us know which credit hours you'll be registering for and we'll, we'll take, take count of those. Um, you will actually register for the courses yourself. It will be a summer 2020, 2022 registration and it will be graded credit. Um, so once you're admitted, you'll register yourself. We'll assist with sort of, you know, all the information that you need to take care of that. And then there will be a tuition charge on your uh, summer statement of fees and accounts for the credit hours that you are taking. So either the three or the four or the seven. Um, when you're in country, you will be staying in student in hotel style accommodation. There'll be double occupancy rooms. So you'll be staying with another traveler on the program. Uh, breakfast will be provided daily as well as um, quite a few other additional meals that will be uh, taken in local establishments. So you'll go as a group um, to a local restaurant and you'll experience the, the local cuisine. There will be some meals that you will have to pay for out of pocket, um, but um, there are several meals that are included and definitely breakfast on a daily basis. So the program fee we have not quite established yet, but um, it will include your accommodation, your airfare, breakfast, some lunches and dinners, program related field trips, um, we're hoping to have the, the, the program fee finalized sometime in the next sort of uh, four to six weeks. Um, and we will uh, obviously let you know. Um, ideally, we're gonna have it prior to asking you to apply for the program, because um, I wouldn't wanna ask any student to apply if they didn't know what they were financially committing to. Um, in addition to that, you'll have tuition for up to seven credit hours of OSU um, credit. So whatever you um, typically pay um, for your credit, you will, um, you will pay um, to OSU for those credit hours. And then when you return, you'll receive a graded, uh, a letter grade for the 
experience. So some out-of-pocket expenses that you need to be aware of. Um, as Diane mentioned, the passports are taking quite a long time right now. So if you are a student that does not yet have a passport, um, please begin the application now. Um, our office can help with, with that, sort of get the ball rolling for you and help you figure out what you need to do. Um, we also have a sort of online tutorial that can lead you step by step. Um, you will need things like your birth certificate. So, um, you know, make sure that you are beginning to kind of think about that and collect these documents. I also typically recommend that students who um, may have a passport that you just double check that you're going to have um, enough validity on it that it doesn't expire sometime prior to departure. Um, if you're a U.S. passport holder, you do not need a visa. Um, some passport holders of other nationalities may need visas. So if you are thinking about traveling on this program um, and you are uh, not a U.S. passport holder, please reach out to me and we can kind of talk through what that might look like for you. Um, any travel related expenses, if you need new hiking shoes or if you need new luggage, um, that will obviously be an out of pocket expense you'll need to budget for. Um, there are some meals. Again, you know, you can make them as budget friendly as you want to. Um, I think maybe in a bit, Anthony can kind of talk a little bit about, you know, costs of things while you, while he was in country. Um, in country personal expenses. So if you do some, you know, shopping or if you, you know, want to do a tour that's not included in the in the program, um, there may be some additional in country personal expenses. Um, we recommend that all students uh, talk to their medical care provider. So I, I, either um, on campus health center or your primary medical provider um, prior to departure. We ask students to have an internet, what we call an international travel consultation. So you'll tell the provider that you're traveling to Cyprus um, and then they will talk through anything um, that you may need to consider for travel there. And then when you submit your application fee, there is a $150 application fee and a $50 administrative fee. Um, so that comes you know, a little bit later on down the track um, that you won't have to start thinking about it until you're ready to submit your application. So there are some scholarships available. Um, so oia.osu.edu has a list of scholarships that are offered through our office. Um, now, I know that we are just um, launching our common application for all the OIA sponsored applications uh, or scholarships. So you'll be able to uh, kind of submit one application. You'll be considered for everything that you'll, you're eligible for. Um, the scholarship application processes and deadlines vary. So begin planning early, make sure that you're kind of marking those deadlines on your calendar so that you're not missing out on anything um, that you might be eligible to apply for. Um, I do also know that there is a grant for students that take the geography course that was a sustainability grant. Um, so there may be some additional funding if you are a student who chooses to take the, sustain the geography course. Um, and there is financial aid available. So uh, through the Office of Financial Aid, um, if you, you know, you can meet with your financial aid officer to discuss, you know, how the increased cost of attendance may affect your, your financial aid package. Um, but obviously all these discussions are kind of happening now. So you're beginning to plan. Um, currently on the program brochure page, we have um, estimated expenses for 20, 19, I believe, because that was the last time that the program ran. Um, so you can kind of get an idea. Um, I will say that the program in 2019 did not include airfare. So this, this year's program will look a little bit more expensive, but uh, you have to kind of remember that airfare is wrapped into that program fee. Um, so eligibility. So uh, we ask that students that apply have a GPA of 2.5 or higher and have completed two semesters of undergraduate education. Um, we are also, you know, our processes and our programs are evolving with COVID um, and things have had to change a little bit. Um, entry into Cyprus could be contingent upon a negative COVID test, proof of vaccination or both. So just kind of being prepared um, that you, you know, you may need to provide proof of vaccination um, and or um, or a negative test um, and then currently to return to the United States, uh, the group will also have to have a negative COVID test. So um, your faculty and country will help facilitate that process. And then if you need a test prior to departure, 
um, you know, we can tell you when to initiate that in order to be compliant. Um, and most, you know, CVS, Walgreens um, kind of offers opportunities for that. Um, unfortunately, things change, you know, on a weekly basis, daily basis. So, you know, it may be something that sort of, if you've been admitted um, mid-March, maybe even later, um, we kind of have some more information about the requirements to get into the country. So, as you know, everything's kind of changing. So, as with everything study abroad, uh, we kind of advise students to go in sort of with a, a flexible, um, open-minded attitude and kind of ready to kind of roll with the punches a little bit. Um, certainly, we're going to do everything to get you the information as quickly as possible. Um, you know, but we are kind of working on a moving target as well here. So. So there is a deadline. Um, you can apply, you will apply online through Buckeye link, or you can um, submit an application from the brochure page. So the Cyprus uh, Sustainability and Cyprus brochure page. Um, the deadline for submitting your application is January 5th. And you can submit your application early. However, um, every application that is submitted by January 5th will be considered uh, for the program. So, you know, if you wanna get it off your plate, you can do that. Um, but you can also, you know, wait until that January 5th deadline or just prior to it. Um, when you submit your application, you will have to pay a 150 application fee. There's a couple of personal questions um, that you'll answer. So, you know, kind of asking why you want to participate in this program, why you selected this program, what you can bring to the table. Um, typically, aside from your GPA, this is really all we have to work with to determine suitable applicants. Um, so if we have an oversubscription of applicants, um, we will kind of fall back on those personal questions. So while we don't want 10 pages, we also don't want one sentence to kind of articulate um, and sort of sell yourself um, to be the best applicant for this program. Um, Diane, did you have to say, want to say something? Yeah, I, I did. I wanted to pop into these questions because I'm trying to answer them and I got, I don't oh. know, out into a live thing but the program is planned for every may but as we said it's a new program and we didn't get to go last year so it's really a new program so we hope we have as great a response as we had last year people interested and what was the cost in the past can you give a rough estimate was one of the questions let me just pull it up prior here. to the airfare but we yes because we want everything taken care of and I want to make sure that we have the support of OSU in case we ever did have to leave early or something that I've got uh, a travel. So I'm just flights. pulling it up here. Um, program fee, it looks like, um, so it looks like we had a 2021 program fee set. We just never traveled. Um, the program fee for 2021, which did include airfare, um, was 61.28. So that was program fee, um, including all the inclusions that this year's program has. So I am guessing that the program fee will look similar um, to- Is that with or without tuition? That is without tuition. Okay. And uh, the person asking, I answered it, but I know we have this question. Does this course count for anything for a nursing student such as GE? It was set up so that all incoming students on the new gen ed themes, uh, that this will meet the criteria for what you could take. Uh, we're trying to make this user-friendly course. All right, uh, anything else? So there's a question, are you planning to uh, run this program in summer 2023? We hope so. We hope so, but we want 2022 to run first. If we don't yeah. get 2022 to run, we'll see about 2023. Um, and then who selects the applicants to go? It is between- uh, the, the, two, the faculty members. Yep, the two faculty um, and any insight from our office that is needed as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so notification of admission will occur sometime in mid to late January. Um, I, it will come by email and at that point we'll also kind of give you further instructions on what, you know, what's next, what needs to happen, the next steps. Um, I will you say also, that, oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. we also sure. need to say we're capped at 20 participants because of the size of our transportation. Okay. 
Yeah, so um, so we'll admit the 20 participants, like I said, it's not a first come first serve thing. So as long as, you know, you put some, you know, I would encourage students to kind of really invest some time and effort into those applicant questions to make sure that, you know, you're putting your best foot forward. Um, that goes for scholarships too. Our scholarships tend to be competitive. You know, it's hard to say what COVID will do to students' desire to travel. Um, are we going to have a bumper crop? Are we, you know, are students going to be hesitant? Um, but similar with the um, with the scholarships that, you know, kind of really writing a personal statement that kind of articulates clearly and effectively, you know, your reasons for wanting to study abroad and how this is going to, you know, impact your future and personal and professional goals really goes a long way. Um, I will say with the notification of admission that um, we will admit sort of mid to late January and sort of sometime in January. Um, actually, I think I just say it on the next slide, so I will just hold on a minute. But passports, we've already talked about. If you haven't got a passport, no matter where you go, you're going to need one. So, you know, if you are thinking about studying abroad in 22 or 23, I would say go ahead and get working on your passport just to make sure that, you know, you have it in plenty of time. Um, so, um, Obviously, uh, COVID-19 has dramatically affected study abroad and the way we do our jobs and um, our ability to do our jobs. Um, so right now we are proceeding with caution um, to plan for plans for summer 2022 programs. Um, we have a limited portfolio, but we do have sort of a strong but mighty um, group of faculty and programs that we hope to run. Um, sometime in uh, probably mid to late January, the university will make a determination on whether or not a program is viable. Um, now, this will be based on the COVID situation in the United States, the COVID situation in country, vaccination rates here and abroad. Um, so, you know, we definitely, while we really want to send students overseas and faculty overseas, we want to make sure that we're making a, a good um, decision. Um, that is in the best interest of everybody. So, um, you know, aside from your passport, I would encourage you to hold off making any sort of financial commitments um, to, you know, buying a new set of luggage or anything like that until we have made a decision um, so that you're not sort of out of pocket. Um, that's another reason why we have included uh, the airfare in with the program fee is because you know, we don't want students booking airfares and then the program getting canceled because of COVID and then you're out, you know, your airfare or your money that you um, that you invested towards your flight. Um, so we've kind of answered questions as we've go as we've gone on. Um, I will stop sharing now and I think that uh, Stavros has a, pr a presentation to share, but please continue to put your questions in the Q&A and we can answer them and Diane's got to go. So, um, We'll talk to her later. I, I will. I do have um, uh, email addresses for the faculty, um, all on the program brochure page. So if you would like to reach out to to Diane or Stavros, you can feel free to do that. Um, you can also ask me as well. Um, but I will go ahead and let Stavros. I think I did. I, I stopped sharing my screen. And you can go ahead and share yours, Stavros. You okay. Go. You see it. Okay, I have a <clears throat> formal, you know, presentation to go over. Uh, however, since I have a, the resource of Anthony here, I'm going to be, as I go through, be deferring uh, to him uh, most of the questions so you can uh, get, uh, you know, the student uh, perspective. I think it's always, you know, better than uh, me, <clears throat> you know, going over all of these uh, things. So let's uh, start with some, you know, background. I have a, maybe I'll put it on. Uh, where is it? Okay, so the program is, you know, as we was said before, May 6th through June 4th. And, uh, oops, here is the, brochure, the list, and one uh, picture from uh, 
Cyprus. Uh, we go to this place, you saw the picture before on the southern southwestern coast. This is the credit hours for my course, for the geography course. Uh, I put it all in there for interested people. Maybe I can even make this available if you want. So you can see the whole thing. No reason to spend uh, more time on it. You will see some of the majors that uh, took the course uh, before. So here is uh, the class of 2018. There were nine uh, students at the time. And here are the majors of those students. That's one question that I get asked uh, often. Geographic information science, a geography major. Neuroscience, two international studies, marketing. There was one undecided, an astronomy student, a finance uh, pre-law, freshman, actually second uh, semester freshman, and accounting. Here is the academic uh, ranks. There was no senior in the first uh, class. Here is the majors in the second uh, group. There were 15 students at the time. And uh, as you can see, there was a big uh, range in terms of uh, the majors, several from the sciences, uh, like biology, pharmacy, uh, zoology, and uh, you know geography, other areas. So maybe you recognize your major on this yourselves. <clears throat> Here is the academic um, level. Again, in this uh, case, we have four seniors. So, different uh, classes, a different uh, mix. On this uh, slide, I have the YouTube uh, videos that were created by students who have taken uh, the class. And uh, here is uh, the students that uh, have uh, been uh, uh, contacted by OIA and they produced uh, what they call uh, profiles. So. I have the links up here. You know, you can get on the uh, OIA page and get to read and see what these uh, students uh, wrote about that. Okay, here is their names. Uh, I'll flip through the course outline. Here is the location of Cyprus, maybe go back one. So you get uh, a good idea of what we are talking about. Cyprus is way down here in the northeastern corner of the Mediterranean. Here is Athens, here is uh, Rome, here is uh, Paris, and here is London. So there is a lot of connections with all of these uh, places. However, this time around, since we'll have to travel as a group based on university policy, you won't be able to maybe do individual travel. We had uh, a lot of cases before, including Anthony here, went to Greece after the program. I had uh, parents that came to Cyprus and they traveled with their students uh, to uh, Paris here, to Israel, other places. However, this time around, that option is not available. Nonetheless, Cyprus is very well connected, you know, with a lot of these European uh, capital cities, as well as, you know, um, secondary even uh, cities. The way we usually go is uh, through Vienna, actually. Here it is. So you'll see some of the European uh, cities. Uh, and uh, as of now, that's how we are planning to fly to Cyprus again through Vienna. Vienna Larnaga uh, is the best uh, connection. It arrives about 2.30 in the afternoon. And I will meet you at the airport, actually. That's how I did it uh, before as well. And uh, when we leave, when you leave, it's going to be like 6.30 in the morning. Okay, let's uh, come to Neapolis University. That's where we are going to be. This is the main uh, drag. The picture of this uh, uh, aerial photograph is very old. However, the main drag is right here. It's full of hotels now a lot more commercial than it used to be back then. Here is the main entrance uh, to the university. That's where we're going to have our classes. You see the main entrance of the first, uh, the 2018 class, and then, uh, you know, the class room over here in the 2019. 
if students are taking an exam actually this day, this is my desk right here is a standard American classroom with a projector with a computer and a, a smart board and all of these uh, kinds of uh, things. Okay. And here is the inner yard courtyard of the university. Uh, this is uh, the cafeteria over here and we can meet, we meet right here and there is uh, food in here you can eat. The classroom is kind of behind here in this area. Okay, maybe Anthony has something to tell us about any one of these facilities, the university facilities from personal experience. Sure, yeah, uh, the cafeteria is really good if you want to get a snack. Um, there's, we usually had a break in between class. I don't, I don't know if the classes will be the same length, but mm -hmm. class was usually a couple hours. So you would have a break. Uh, you could get coffee. They had uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. You'll you learn about the halloumi cheese, which was really good. Um, and yeah, it, it's a really nice university. Uh, you know, you, it feels like you're, you know, at a American university. It's very up to date and actually used to be a, a resort, I believe, or a hotel. Yes. Okay. In fact, uh, some of these uh, students in the break, they were got, uh, buying French fries for snack. That's how much they like the French fries. Okay, Anthony, go for it. Sure. So uh, yeah, the, the housing uh, was also very good. I We had uh, four guys in my situation. So we had our own uh, uh, apartment or uh, how would you call them? Villa, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and yeah cluster of apartments, villas, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So we were all, all of our classmates, we lived together in the same uh, same row of housing. And it, it was all very, very nice and very spacious for what we needed. Um, there's a full kitchen. Uh, one bathroom for two bedrooms is what we had. Uh, and it's very uh, close. It's, it's like a five minute walk to the classroom. So it's pretty convenient. Um, and there's breakfast um, over here by the pool area. If you can see, there's a, there's a breakfast uh, area that you could eat outside where we ate every morning. So the housing is, has everything you need, basically. The maybe upstairs is uh, where the bedrooms are. Downstairs, you have this uh, table that you see here and uh, sitting, uh, you see a couch over here and there is a little uh, kitchen further in. If uh, anybody wants to go uh, more economical, if you wish, you can uh, buy food. There is a grocery store not very far, and uh, you can uh, cook in, uh, you know, this uh, little uh, kitchen area. This uh, pool that you see up here is part of the main uh, hotel. Uh, the apartments are next, are separate from the hotel, and these apartments have their own pool, actually, and then you have access to this big pool over here with the rest of the uh, guests of the hotel. So in the morning, the you know breakfast uh, is a lot of people. We usually would sit uh, two, three tables uh, together as a group, but there are other guests of the hotel there as well. And uh, you can uh, use this pool and the pools for the cluster of the apartments. Stavros, we had a question: If the housing will be in the apartments or the hotel? In the apartments. The students stay in the apartments. I, they put me in the hotel, and I'm hoping they will put me in the apartments too because the hotel is not as good as the apartments. You know, I mean, I, it's a lot better. You know, the setup as you can see here. There are places you can sit outside. There are some that are on the second floor, like a little balcony. <clears throat> so it's really a nice uh, setting. Okay. Anything else? Maybe Anthony has anything else to say? Um, yeah, just definitely take advantage of sitting outside. I remember we liked uh, the views with the the trees, and there's some cats that were outside of our apartment. So. Okay. 
the cats is a big attraction for the whole. Uh, there are cats everywhere in Cyprus. It's, there's a long history of it. We'll maybe talk about it when we are there and all of that, but uh, there is lots of them everywhere. <clears throat> All right, uh, in uh, 2017, uh, Paphos, the city where we are going to be, served as the European capital of culture with Aarhus in Denmark, actually, to European places. And uh, because of that, they did a lot of, uh, you know, um, they gave a major facelift to the town, to the city. And uh, we take a big, a long, uh, you know, field trip, we walk most of it, the upper part of town, uh, the university and the, you know, the apartments are by the ocean, five minute, uh, 10 minute walk from the ocean. This is up town, we should say, is called the main Paphos, let's say it's center of Paphos. And we are going to walk in front of all of these uh, things. We have a lot of things to say, the history and all of that kind of stuff here is the, uh, Anthony's uh, class, actually, Anthony is here, I think, right here, and, uh, making the OHIO uh, sign. Um, so we're going to go in front of all of these. You see the pedestrianization, uh, gentrification that they did uh, to the town. Uh, down by the, uh, by the sea, where we are going to be, like I said, we are only like uh, five, uh, minute walk, 10 minute walk at most from the Mediterranean where you can go swimming. Um, there is this uh, promenade here that you can walk all around actually from where the where we are staying. I would get up and walk two hours every morning myself. You know, it's in front of the hotels, right by where the waves uh, break. And uh, first uh, time we do this thing as a group. So I will uh, let you know places to avoid in terms of swimming and uh, that, that kind of stuff because uh, it can get uh, dangerous in terms of the waves and uh, those kinds of things. Okay, here is Anthony when uh, that very first day of walking actually along this uh, promenade, this is area behind the castle. The castle is right here. Anything to say about this, Anthony, maybe? Any sure, yeah. Uh this uh, is one of the best uh, parts of Paphos. Uh, definitely take advantage of it. There's the castle and there's a, a lighthouse. So you can you can walk all the way to the lighthouse. Uh, there's actually a, a restaurant there. We I ate there with some of my classmates uh, once. Um, and then, you know, there's there's ice cream in different shops. You can stop <laughs> along the, the harbor here. You know, definitely at night, it's nice to do that with a group of your, uh, classmates. Yeah. Right here, across from this tree, mainly in the middle of this promenade, there is a couple of ice cream places, a popular stop along this uh, promenade. Uh, Paphos is a historic place, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site since the 1980s, actually. And uh, here is the main entrance, the previous group. This lady right here is a uh, a tour guide in uh, these uh, uh, field trips that we do. In addition to what I will be going over with you, the tour guide will give you her version of things. And uh, <clears throat> Paphos has some of the most uh, awesome, uh, spectacular mosaics, actually, that you can find any place. I've seen mosaics in Greece, in Italy, in Sicily, all over the place. They stand up to every one of those. So here they are, a sample of them. Here is the columns, that's me behind the column here. And these are the tombs of the kings, as they are called. We are talking about uh, something that was, uh, these uh, tombs have been uh, hewn in rock. It's underground. You can probably see the top part up here. We will uh, walk, the whole thing is like an expansive uh, open air, you know, museum, more or less. Uh, like I said, uh, Cyprus and Paphos is a historic place. History goes back 10, 11,000 years. On this uh, thing right here is uh, the visit uh, of St. Paul 
St. Paul, the biblical place. Cyprus was a Roman uh, province at the time. Uh, he came with his uh, uh, group from uh, the coast over here. They came to Salamis, the eastern uh, part of the island, and then they came to Paphos. Paphos was the capital of Cyprus at the time. So he preached to the Roman uh, governor, converted him to Christianity. And here is a painting by Raphael, The Blinding of Elimas, it is called. I give you the citation here. You can go and read uh, your Bible and uh, uh, see what it is. In fact, uh, this December, Pope Francis is planning to visit this place right here, retracing the steps of St. Paul. The previous uh, Pope uh, Benedict XVI also uh, visited uh, this location here and held a service. Here is the castle. You are going to visit here. You can go on top and see. Uh, this is another monastery, Ayos Neophytos is called that we will visit. And here is the town of Paphos uh, that we mentioned uh, before. <clears throat> okay, so that's a Paphos, you know, field trip. Then we have the visit uh, to the capital. We are going to spend two nights in the capital, part of the program, part of the money that uh, you are going to be uh, paying is going to cover two nights in the capital. The first time I did the program, we spent one night and we visit uh, the European Union uh, headquarters in Cyprus. You know, in every EU uh, member country, there is a building like this that uh, is the official representation, the representative of the commissioner of the parliament so, and all of these uh, EU uh, offices. So, so we we'll visit here and we're going to have a official lecture here is the auditorium, if you wish, the main room where they gave us a talk. Uh, this is the first group, and this is the 2019 class. So that's, uh, you know, one activity that we are going to have in the capital. The other activity uh, is, um, you know, visiting the central bank, the first group right here in this red uh, auditorium where they hold the governors of the European uh, banks. Um, and over here in the second uh, group, uh, Anthony is right here. You know, we visited the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's all around this main uh, hall uh, place where they hold uh, foreign leaders, ambassadors, that kind of stuff about the geopolitics of the Eastern Mediterranean and, uh, you know, those kinds of uh, things. And after that, we visited uh, the presidential palace. You have seen this uh, picture before. Here is the group outside the presidential palace. As I mentioned before, I'm a native of Cyprus. Uh, I have established a lot of uh, you know, connections and uh, doing this every time I do it, I meet more people. I establish a bigger network if you wish. And because of the network with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they I was able to get into the presidential palace here and it's a historic uh, building uh, to visit and tour and see all of the art and all of the things inside. Here is the group outside in these beautiful uh, bougainvilleas and other flowers in the gardens uh, of the presidential palace. There is one thing that I would like to stress, we'll get uh, to see and do things in Cyprus that you'll never dream of doing in the US actually, especially in the present uh, climate you know, it's uh, out of the question. This uh, wall that you see behind here and the Greek columns up here, this is the Venetian wall. Cyprus was occupied by the Venetians uh, from uh, 1489 to 1571. And uh, the Venetians uh, fortified uh, Nicosia against the attack of the Turks. Uh, so this is the wall as it uh, stands today, part of it. And above it is the uh, old, uh, City Hall, you see the Greek columns uh, here. This is uh, a general view of uh, Nicosia, the capital of Cyprus, Lefkosia in Greek, uh, the wider city, you see the minarets uh, here, you know, it's the Turkish sector. And uh, this is the main street of uh, the old city. It's also pedestrianized. You see all of these people walking, cafes here. Uh, we had uh, dinner at one of the, lunch uh, rather, 
at one of the restaurants in the middle of this uh, street. And then we had a dinner after we walked uh, the length of the green line, the dividing uh, line, uh, right before you get to the other side, which I discourage you from doing because it doesn't have any legal status. Should something happen, you know, then uh, there is no recourse for any legal action or anything. Anthony, anything about uh, these areas here? These buildings, any memories, anything that comes up? Sure, yeah, no, uh, uh, two nights in uh, Nicosia that definitely was uh, better than one night, but even even two nights wasn't enough. There's so much uh, history to, to see, as you guys can tell from the Venetian walls and the historic buildings. Um, I definitely, I, I enjoyed the museums. We went to the Levendios uh, Gallery, which mm -hmm. is the art gallery, and then the uh, National Archaeological Museum is also there. Uh, yes. So definitely get a good place uh, for culture and arts. Um, I remember on Lidra Street, it was fun to walk around. We got um, Mastija ice cream, which is a, <laughs> a flavor. Uh, it's hard to describe, but if you get the chance, it's a fun thing to try. Um, and we went to Lach, we had some Lachma June, which was uh, actually an Armenian uh, restaurant that was on, on Lidra Street as well. It was an interesting. Uh, so Lidra Street has a lot of interesting, you see people walking in the different shops and stuff. So it's definitely uh, worth walking there. Maybe we'll have another night. Yeah, three nights would be great. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, uh, like Sour said as well, I, I didn't cross over. Some of my classmates crossed over uh, to the other side. Um, and But they didn't, they didn't stay for long. They came back pretty quickly. So I, you know, that's... All I can I can say for that I don't have any personal experience with it. So. Yeah. How about the the Green Line? Can you tell them anything about uh, the Archbishopric and all of that area? The icons down there, the museum. Sure. Yeah. So we we went to the uh, Archbishop's uh, uh, grounds. So there's a there's a church and uh, where the Archbishop uh, stays is there, and they, they have a. Uh, theological school there, I believe, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, great Byzantine history, and it, uh, part of the, you'll, you'll learn part of the efforts that they've had there to uh, reclaim some of the lost or stolen icons. Um, and then when you walk, so it's close to the Green Line. So the Green Line is the UN uh, peacekeeping buffer zone uh, since 1974. We got to walk along most of it. Um, a good part of it there's there's a there's uh not much it's like a ghost town basically it made a big impression on me um uh, you know it's you'll learn about the history uh but it's it's uh definitely you don't want to they discourage taking pictures uh it's actually a is uh it's militarized i believe uh and but it, it's just a, a really interesting place to walk you can see buildings kind of frozen in time and uh, you see people still living there and it's a it's an interesting experience to see a, a capital city that's uh, divided uh, like that and um, I'm sure you guys will get to experience it as well um, and there's a I remember there's a nice bookstore that we stopped by in that area mm -hmm. uh, so you know if if you're with your classmates or with professor Constantino it's it's a really uh, unique uh, place to explore. Yes, if there are any, I don't know who is attending and uh, listening to this, but if there are people who are in uh, any majors, you know, that have anything to do with politics, uh, power issues, you know, it's a unique experience. You will have no place else, uh, certainly not in uh, Europe, because uh, Nicosia is the only divided capital city, actually. We are walking along this uh, green line. You will see the destruction that was brought about because of the conflict and uh, how it exists right now. You want an idea of a boundary? You know, this is it right here. And uh, like I said, uh, it's such a surreal place in many ways. You know, when we sit, uh, we walk it. And then when we sit at this restaurant at the end of this uh, Litra Street, 
right before you cross over. In fact, you are going to see a lot of people crossing over from where we'll be having the dinner after we do the walking in the tour of the Archbishopric, the museum, uh, the uh, school, uh, all of these historic uh, buildings in the area. <laughs> and uh, the following day, after the second day in the capital, we will uh, drive to the mountains. <clears throat> Uh, the capital of Cyprus is in uh, a plain, say 500 uh, feet elevation, you know, and then we're going to go up here at the highest point in uh, the island, the mountains, which is 6,400 feet. So there's quite a bit of, uh, again, in elevation in about an hour, actually, we do this. And uh, at the top up there, we have all of these monuments that uh, we will visit. The church uh, is an important, has been an important part of, uh, you know, the Cypriot uh, culture for thousands of years. And uh, up here you see the students in front of Archbishop Makarios' uh, oversized uh, statue that used to be in the Archbishop actually, and then they moved it up here. This is where he went to become a monk. This is the Kiko Monastery, the richest uh, mm -hmm. monastery of Cyprus with all kinds of icons and mosaics. And uh, then we go to the very top here. You see all of this, there is a lot of uh, icons on either side of this uh, walk to the top. It's called throne, throne in English. The English word throne comes from this thing right here. And uh, here is two pictures of two villages. Uh, one is, this village of Kako Petria, on the way to the mountains, we stop here for people to get some water, go to the bathroom and adjust a little bit, because it's about uh, halfway in terms of elevation. Uh, the first uh, group, we went uh, straight and some people had uh, problems adjusting and uh, getting dizzy and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, so we stop uh, at this uh, village. This other village over here is probably the most uh, picturesque uh, village of Cyprus. Um, here is the first group outside uh, the entrance to the main church. We'll uh, show some pictures of this in a little bit uh, later. Here is a view of the mountains of Cyprus. A lot of people don't uh, realize this thing, but there is an unusual diversity in terms of, uh, you know, the scenery, the vegetation, economic activities, uh, water, rain, snow, ice, all of these different uh, things in a relatively short, uh, relatively short uh, small uh, distances, small uh, space, geographic uh, space. Water is at a premium. Here is one of these, um, you know, dams that they use to collect the water and use it for supporting the agriculture and tourism. The big, uh, you know, uh, part of the economy of the island today. <clears throat> Uh, this is a picturesque uh, village of Omodos, part of this uh, other field trip that we are going to do. Over here, you see two pictures of uh, vineyards in Cyprus. Cyprus' uh, viticulture goes back thousands of years, and it is still going on today. Uh, we visit this uh, village uh, first, and then from there, we went to this um, winery. It's called Lamburi and we got to taste the wine as well. Okay. Anthony, anything to say about this? I see you in the front row here. Yeah, um, so the Kumadaria is a, is a famous wine that we try. It was a historical wine from Cyprus, so definitely uh, try that if you get the opportunity. Um, Omodos, I remember, is in, the biggest thing I remember was the the bread. We went to a bakery. Oh yeah, okay. It, it it smells like the whole street, like it's the bread smells so good. And we tried um, some different uh, pastry, uh, you know, sweets and stuff. There's um, they make a it almost looks like candles. They make they dip uh, grape yeah. grape juice around uh, mm -hmm. almonds, right yeah. or almonds? Yeah. Jukos. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, okay. You remember the bread? That's very important. Yeah. One of my favorite uh, products of Omodos too. 
Yeah, no, it definitely was a memorable thing. And Omodos is a, a scenic village, so definitely enjoy it while you're there. Mm -hmm. These narrow streets, all of these flowers, uh, they, uh, the square, we're going to sit down and have a cup of coffee there and all of those uh, kinds of things. And the church, we're going to visit the church as well. I don't have all pictures up here. Um, the other place that we visit part of this uh, field trip is uh, the theater that is called Kurion. It's an open air amphitheater here. It overlooks the sea, actually. You can sit here and, uh, I don't know, they usually have uh, Greek uh, tragedies, uh, Shakespeare plays, those kinds of things, music, uh, festivals, concerts, uh, all of those kinds of things. And since we are talking about the EU, when Cyprus was a uh, chair of the EU, they brought the heads of state, prime ministers, presidents, all of these people right at this uh, place. Um, next to it is this uh, castle. It's a medieval castle that goes back to the eight of the Crusades. The Knights of uh, Templar used to stay here and the uh, Knights of St. John of uh, Jerusalem later uh, were making that uh, wine that Comandaria, uh, uh, it is called today Comandaria, the French uh, word for it. And they were running the show from this castle right here. They had uh, vineyards around, and they also were raising a lot of sugar. Sugar Cyprus is a south enough uh, place where they could, uh, you know, produce sugar. They were sending it to Venice, uh, in particular, because of this southern uh, location. And here is the uh, students of the first group on top of this castle. We can get up there for those who want to see the view of the plane and the sea in the distance from up there. <clears throat> this is uh, Limassol, the Limassol in Greek, the marina, and looking at the other end of the area here, a lot of these high rises, uh, a lot more now than even back then when I took the picture. And uh, we, uh, Oops, we go to the marina and then go in. There is a restaurant that we go where they cook, you know, Cypriot uh, dishes. So you will have uh, the opportunity to taste cooked uh, Cypriot uh, uh, dishes, all kinds of uh, things uh, at this place. And uh, nearby is also a castle that we, you can visit. Uh, Anthony and uh, me and somebody else, one of the other students, uh, Randall, visited the castle at the same time. Or you can uh, go around the neighborhood and experience it and, uh, you know, the gentrification that has taken place and those types of things. But that's one of the places where we have these uh, common uh, dinners, uh, lunches. When we go on these uh, field trips, it's part of the program because, you know, you have to know the restaurants and you have to know the places and we don't have, uh, we are pressed for time most often. You know, there are so many things to see and uh, do. Okay, on the way back, we <clears throat> uh, stop at Aphrodite's Rock. This is the picture that I have behind me, actually. Um, this is the most famous uh, place in Cyprus, the most photographed uh, by far, actually. This is where, according to Greek mythology, Aphrodite was born from the waves, from the foam of the waves. Uh, read Homer, any of these ancient uh, stories, poems. Uh, this is the place right here, this rock. Here you see it behind me right here um, on this uh, picture and some other views of it. A legendary location. Um, in uh, Cyprus. Okay, moving on. Here is the group having breakfast. We were talking about breakfast before, right here. And uh, for lunches, one of the common uh, popular uh, things that students eat actually is this pita that you see right here. The Cypriots uh, have an oval shaped pizza, a uh, pita. They slide, uh, they put the stuff in the, on the side, the meat tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, parsley, those kinds of things. It's uh, 
relatively cheap depending on where you have it anywhere between five six uh, to not eight uh, euros probably in that range so you eat one of these things probably is enough uh, for a uh, last you for a whole day actually we have the greek salad here the vlagia fish kebab and the greek coffee in this uh, picture olive olives here olive oil and there is all kinds of different things we'll uh, talk about them later in detail you know when we get there there are some of these places right by the university where you can go and uh, you know have a souvlaki pita so you don't have to go very far anything to add uh, to it anthony regarding food drink um yeah like uh so it's pretty economical to get the Cy cypress pita is very filling um there's other options uh, as well we uh I think we went to an Indian restaurant and a Chinese. So if you guys, you know, don't want to eat only Greek or Cypriot food, there's definitely a lot of options in Paphos and in uh, Nicosia. Um, but definitely try, you know, ask uh, Professor Constantino, try to, you know, enjoy some of the local things too. I, I remember that was one of the most uh, memorable parts for a lot of people, you know, trying the local food and drink and, uh, Chef Dalia was a kind mm -hmm. of a pork. Uh, and yeah, there's just a lot of uh, new things to try. So don't be shy. And maybe go to a taverna for. Yeah, yeah. We, we went to a place called Dimokritos. Uh, I don't know if it's. Yeah, uh, that's I guess, what right? I was yeah. talking about. Yeah. And uh, it's a great place. You get, to, you get food and drink and uh, dancing. So they have live music and uh, traditional separate dancers too so it was a we went there towards the end of the trip as a as a whole class and it was uh also really memorable so if you guys get the chance to do that definitely go for that you should send us a, a greek uh, student uh, to a program like you so he can uh, lead them again <laughs> i know I'll, I'll have to do some recruiting <laughs> yeah there you go <laughs> uh there is some cypriot uh, dancing um yeah, there is some, uh, you know, Cypriot uh, handicrafts. We go to the handicraft industry, actually, in the capital for people to buy things like these for gifts. And uh, in this uh, place in the capital, they also have uh, jewelry. They have all kinds of things. They have the, uh, you know, places where they make them right there. So you can see them uh, working with, uh, say, jewelry stuff with wood uh, with um, you know making uh, the earthen uh, jars things all kinds of uh, stuff right there in front of you you can uh, see how they make them uh, too and buy and bring back gifts this is uh, the first uh, group this is my hometown my home uh, village is called Tsada and uh, I took the first uh, group here to my brother's house actually for a dinner here yeah, they are you know my brother is a fanatic about uh, organic uh, vegetables uh, food in general so he prepared uh, a dinner for us they said it was the best they ever had he raises his own uh, vegetables his own chickens his own eggs uh, his own meat his own everything wine uh, olive oil so everything is produced on, uh, in his uh, property. This is the students in front of a monument in my village. We walked the village so they can get a sense of what uh, the place, how it is structured and all of that kind of stuff. The other <clears throat> field trip that we did, this is optional, optional in the sense that uh, it costs a lot more money to do it uh, through the university. So, since I know the people that run the show, I negotiated with them and I got a great prize. And we go to this uh, most wilderness, if there is one wilderness area in Cyprus, is this uh, place is called Agamas Peninsula. And uh, here is two or three representative uh, pictures of this place. We went there actually twice. Students liked it so much. This is uh, an area called the Blue Lagoon. 
and uh, the water is as clear as it gets. It's one of the top places in Europe, actually. You can look it up and, uh, you know, on the internet if you want. We stop at the uh, Aphrodite's uh, bus nearby for lunch. There is a restaurant here on the side over the looking the ocean. Um, and on the way, we walked a significant uh, portion of this uh, gorge. It's called Avagas Gorge. And uh, here is a picture that you saw before, the students in front of sea caves along the way toward uh, this safari in uh, the Akamas uh, Peninsula. Anthony, I'm sure you have a lot of things to say about this. Yeah, no, no there's uh, definitely bring some good walking shoes. It's a great time. At Blue Lagoon, uh, you can jump right off the boat into the water. So if you, if you like swimming, uh, it's a great place. The water is a little bit cooler in May, but it was definitely refreshing, you know, after walking around and it, it, it's pretty hot out. It's usually in the nineties while we were there. So, um, yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of, you know, I don't know if Louisa will be the tour guide again, but she did a great tour <laughs> after ladies baths and all the places that we went to kind of, you know, telling us the, the mythology and some of the history of each place. So, Definitely uh, worth going to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Akamas is a beautiful place. Uh, it's definitely worth going to. Okay. This as long as you're not afraid of heights. I remember the road was kind of, the road looks kind of uh, <laughs> steep. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's part of the thrill, right? Yeah, that's why we, that's why a lot of people wanted to go. A lot of <clears throat> a lot of people uh, loved this uh, Avagas uh, Gorge. Some of them said it was a favorite place. Actually, we walked about halfway uh, when we were there, and uh, we are coming to the end. We have two pictures from the two classes. The first one is 2019, uh, and the second one is uh, 2018. The owners of the university own this resort here too. It's called the Coral Beach uh, Hotel and Resort, actually a five-star place. And uh, they host us on uh, Thursday before the, you know, the end of the program. So we go here by bus, dress up as you can see, uh, and along with the other guests of the hotel, um, all the food you can eat, uh, all different, uh, I don't know how many varieties of uh, cuisines they serve at this uh, place. Uh, let's say Italian, uh, Chinese, Indian, whatever, you know, depending on the guests sometimes, and all the, uh drink and all the dancing that takes place actually we had a great time in uh, both classes in terms of the dancing maybe anthony can say a few more things about this sure yeah the last night was a it was a great way to end the trip uh over they had fireworks they had all you know all you can eat food uh i actually got to dance uh some of the uh Greek dances, and they, they do a thing with uh, the cups, which is a lot of fun. I don't, you guys, I don't know if you guys will get to see that, but uh, it's really entertaining. Uh, they, they have live music, and uh, it was really just a great way to close out the trip. Um, and uh, they have, they're very hospitable uh, to, to host us for the last day. So. They have this uh, custom in Cyprus. Uh, maybe we'll show you pictures and uh, maybe some video where somebody puts these, uh, you know, glasses on their head, how many they can put up there. And we got Anthony in the 2019 class and uh, Joe in the 2018 class, this guy right here. And they, you know, pretended that they were putting the glasses on them. It becomes a big uh, entertaining, uh, type of uh, dance after the professionals do their own uh, thing uh, first. 
Okay. And uh, here is the last uh, two, three slides. We go to this place. It's uh, called Adonis Baths. You know, students swimming here in this little uh, pool right here, part of this uh, safari on the way back. And here is the Blue Lagoon actually from a distance. And uh, another common drink, you know, coffee that uh, they have in Cyprus, in Greece. If anybody has been to Greece, they call it the uh, frappe. It's like the iced uh, latte, say, around here, close to it. Uh, it's the standard uh, coffee everywhere. And finally, a map of Cyprus, since it's a geography class with uh, grapes. And grapes is an important part of uh, the culture of the island. So, in brief way, in a summary fashion, this is, uh, you know, Cyprus, the things we are going to be doing. And uh, hopefully, like I said before, we would get to do it this time around. We didn't do it in uh, 2020. We didn't do it in uh, 2021, although we had the students, but, you know, COVID, uh, the pandemic uh, prevented us from going. So fingers crossed, we'll uh, go to all of these places. And uh, since this is going to be a, a joint uh, program now with uh, nursing, uh, maybe we'll uh, get to do a few more. We'll see once I, we get uh, you know, closer to the end, we'll um, mobilize my connections again and uh, the Maybe we'll enrich the program uh, in some way to um, add a few more things and uh, places uh, to visit along the way, maybe, and things like that, depending, of course, on uh, time and uh, what is uh, happening in the field at the time. So, you have any question about any item? Maybe put it in chat. I don't know if uh, anybody wants to talk individually, maybe I can stay on after this uh, more formal uh, presentation and I can answer questions like that one-on-one -on -one or as a group. Uh, I can set you a Zoom invite or something and we can do it that way, whatever is works. Thank you guys for attending. Um, I did include everybody's email address. Um, Anthony, maybe you can put your email address in the chat too, if you don't mind sharing it if students have questions. Sure. Um, so feel free to reach out if you would like to speak, you know, directly either to myself or to one of the faculty, you can uh, certainly reach out to us to schedule an appointment. Um, and if you have any further questions, you can put them in the, the Q&A. Otherwise, um, this is the conclusion of the formal presentation. So we appreciate your attendance. And I uh, look forward to seeing you um, as the program progresses.